Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're talking best CPUs, best value, best performance, best at starting a fight between a bunch of randoms in the comment section. You know, just the standard stuff. This is a follow on from the top five best desktop CPUs video that we published back in June of 2017. And I'll note the picks we made back then. And of course, put them alongside our new picks. I've dropped the best value quad core category as that no longer really makes sense. Uh, but for those of you wondering, we did previously nominate the Ryzen 5 1400 for that category. Replacing the best value quad core is the best performance gaming CPU. So a new category that's somewhat at the opposite end of the spectrum to the category that it's replacing. In addition to the best performing gaming CPU, we also have picks for the best budget CPU, a best value all rounder desktop CPU, best value productivity CPU, and well, the best extreme desktop CPU. First up, we have the best budget CPU, and previously we went with the Intel Pentium G4560, which I felt was a pretty obvious uh, option at the time and pretty much impossible to beat at the time. Uh, this time around, though, the G5400 doesn't really offer anything new. A 200 megahertz increase in clock frequency isn't really going to get it over the line this time. Although more expensive, I feel the Ryzen 3 2200G offers worlds more value, and apart from being a true quad-core CPU, the integrated Vega 8 GPU is just several times more powerful. And for those holding off on buying a discrete graphics card, because they are quite expensive right now, so as a budget shopper you may want to avoid that, then the 2200G makes perfect sense. I have to admit though, the real competition for the 2200G does come from the Core i3-8100, and that particular processor does cost $20 more, but again, without a discrete graphics card, it gets completely smoked by AMD's APU. Then with the GTX 1060 or an RX 580, for example, well, I feel both CPUs do deliver very similar performance, and we have shown this in previous benchmark videos. For productivity workloads and general usage, again, they are very evenly matched, though once overclocked, the 2200G does generally come out on top for core heavy productivity workloads. So for me, the fact that the Ryzen 3 2200G is an unlocked part that can be overclocked on affordable motherboards, can take advantage of higher clocked memory, packs a powerful integrated GPU, and is slightly cheap in the Core i3-8100, well, all those things for me make it my number one budget CPU pick. If you've got around $200 US to spend on a new CPU, then Congratulations, and if you want something that can handle uh, any and all tasks that you can throw at it with maximum efficiency, then I feel the Ryzen 5 2600 or 2600X really is a must. Previously, we did choose the Ryzen 5 1600, so it makes sense that the R5 2600 series would take over this position. Still, to avoid triggering any members of the Blue Man group, I should just note that the Core i5-8400 is a very attractive alternative. It's a little cheaper as well and arguably does provide better gaming performance in today's titles. But while the 2600 might not be quite as good for gaming, when it comes to productivity workloads, it's really in a different league. It's fair to say that the superior multi-threaded performance offsets the slightly weaker gaming performance. Of course, when it comes to gaming, I am generalizing here, there are situations in games where the Ryzen processor does come out on top. The 2600 and 2600X are also unlocked CPUs and therefore can be overclocked on inexpensive B350 motherboards. I also really like the fact that AMD has announced that these CPUs and the platform will be supported till at least 2020. So that's certainly something worth considering when investing your money. For $300 to $330 US, the Ryzen 7 2700 series can't be beat when it comes to productivity, at least overall. The Core i7-8700 series still holds an advantage for lightly threaded workloads thanks to a clock speed advantage, but for seriously taxing and time consuming workloads, the 2700 and 2700X offer noteworthy performance gains. The second gen Ryzen CPUs also made a decent step forwards when it comes to gaming performance, and here the 2700X is very respectable, especially when paired with the right memory. Then as applications, and I suppose games, continue to make better use of Ryzen 7's many cores, uh, applications such as Premiere Pro CC for example, then we will continue to see Ryzen walk away with it. 
Because of this and AMD's continuing commitment to the AM4 platform, I feel like right now the second gen Ryzen series offers shoppers the most bang for their buck in the $300 US price range. Alright, so you've got yourself a GTX 1080 Ti or perhaps you've taken out a mortgage and got yourself a Titan and you're after the very best gaming CPU the market has to offer. A no compromise solution that just spits out as many frames as your graphics card can under whatever conditions you're gaming. Well, I think there's few that can really argue that the Core i7 8700K isn't that CPU. Intel's low latency ring bus architecture has proven to be the best solution for gaming and couple that with a CPU that can comfortably clock all cores at 4.7 gigahertz and you can do that with the click of a button by enabling MCE if it's not enabled by default. And well, with a bit of manual overclocking, most should hit at least five gigahertz on all cores. So add that, those two factors, you have the low latency and the high frequency and well, you got yourself a winner. I should just quickly note though, not trying to spoil the uh, Core i7 8700K party here, but there is a rumor that Intel might ditch support for the 8th gen series sooner than expected. And that could be a bit of a problem. And while that would be a real, real shame if true, let's be honest, you might die of old age before a five gigahertz, six core, 12 thread CPU is noticeably slower in games than whatever the future might hold. In any case, if money's no object and you simply want the best of the best for gaming, then the Core i7 8700K is it. Hands down, you can't argue with facts. Okay, so last time out I picked the Core i9 7900X and I had the following to say. The Core i9-7900X is incredibly expensive. It does run very hot and when overclocked, it is very power hungry. It doesn't come with a cooler and the X299 platform is very expensive. However, it's also blistering fast and with a custom liquid cooled solution, the overclocked performance is incredible. I've made it clear I don't recommend buying the 7900X until AMD's Threadripper arrives and we've had a chance to reevaluate. Still, if you must buy now and you're aware a competitor isn't coming, then sure, get the 7900X, it's still a beast. So, as you're no doubt well aware, that competitor did arrive, and last year, boy, did it land hard. The Threadripper 1950X and 1920X ripped the Skylake X lineup a new one, and today the 1950X makes a mockery of Intel 7980XE, 7960X, 7940X, 7920X, and 7900X. At least, it does, in my opinion. Although the 16 core, 32 thread Core i7-7960X is at times faster, it also costs 100% more. 100% more for roughly the same performance. And we're not talking about small numbers here. Even last year's best extreme desktop CPU pick, the 7900X still costs slightly more at $920 US. And well, the 1950X just completely wipes the floor with it. This really was the easiest pick of the bunch for me to make and it seems like the majority of shoppers also agree with me. It also doesn't hurt that I replaced my Core i7-6950X with the Threadripper 1950X, and I've been extremely pleased with the results for video editing and gaming. Anyway, right now the Threadripper 1950X occupies 23rd position on Amazon's best CPU sale list, and that is an incredible result for a $900 CPU. In fact, it costs more than twice as much as every CPU that appears before it on the list. Then the 7900X, that comes in at 36th position on the grid, and then the 7960X is 99th, so it just made it into the top 100 list. Any higher on the list and, well, you wouldn't have been able to find it. Well, there you have it, my CPU picks as of May 2018. The Ryzen 3 2200G is a solid choice for budget shoppers, and the upcoming second generation Ryzen 3 CPUs probably won't change that too much, but of course we'll have to wait and see. The Ryzen 5 2600 and 2600X were, in my opinion, the obvious choice as the best value desktop CPUs. Likewise, the Ryzen 7 2700 and 2700X make the most sense for those wanting to get some real work done. Then for the ultimate no compromise gaming experience, well, there's really nothing better than the Core i7-8700K. It's a cracker of a CPU, that one. Then for those after an extreme desktop CPU, I did drop the Core i9-7900X in favor of the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. And I feel spending well over $1,000 US to get a Skylake equivalent just is madness at this point. Finally, don't forget while you're battling over your best CPU picks in an effort to defend the honor of your clan, let me know what your top five worst CPU list currently looks like. 
Personally, I don't think there are any truly bad CPUs that have been released so far this year, but maybe I've missed something. And if I have, I'm sure you guys will let me know about it in the comments section below. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.